This was the best idea for a top series episode ever. So, so many builds of so many different types were submitted, and we broke a record for the most builds submitted for one episode at a staggering 220 setups in seven days' time. Milson build, CQB, long range, speed soft, HPA, and video game builds all under one roof, and that's all to be seen here on US Airsoft for today's countdown on the top 10 airsoft paint jobs. Now for today's show it's all about looks, and the attention to fine detail, and even the focus on art style that's going to be looked at today. And with so many platforms submitted, I'll be stopping here and there to show as many of them as I can, like this battle-worn VFC MP7A1 from Wing of the UK, which began life looking like this but now it looks a lot better like this. As to be expected, a lot of Milson builds were turned in, but this early submission took the cake for the best looking and the most setup of the crowd. Wing went with a tier one operator look with the eight of some pictures online, and with a little Krylon black, dark brown, khaki, and sand, some layering, and a bit of sanding, he got just what he wanted. And in addition of the paint, Wing also added a Toy Soldier DevGro Window Breaker, a VFC MP7 QD Suppressor, a GMP IR DBAL, a generic T1 Micro Dot, an ACM X300U Flashlight, and of course a Magpul Sling to wrap it up. But as good looking as it is, I can already see some people thinking that this is nothing special to what they've seen before. But to that thought, I'd like to interject this Giraffe Lodge Og from Bulligan from Bulligan Airsoft and my favorite magazine, and that's Airsoft Insider. And for this one, I don't have to read my own script. As Bulligan wrote, a quick trip to my local zoo gave me all the inspiration I needed for my JG Og custom paint job. Giraffes have evolved over millions of years to have a distinctive camouflage pattern that works in the scrub and brush in Africa. So I figured it would look decent in the scrub and brush of Utah too. A stock JG Og base gun has plenty of real estate to show out the pattern. Simple tape lines make quick work of the pattern, and Krylon paint is a very durable paint to use, especially for a matte finish. Airsoft is super serious much of the time, so every now and then it's fun to just have fun and do ridiculous stuff, and that's what the Draft Lodge Og is all about. And with that said, we can now move into the countdown at number 10. We're going by pretty quickly, huh? Well, let's keep this going with a returning summer named Gillis from Belgium for his somewhat average Tokimari 5.1 High Kappa. Put quotations around somewhat average though, as the orange and blue nerfish look can throw off an average person, but on the inside 120% spring set and a type or barrel reside. Put together like a sleeper build, I'd expect a few ugly looks when this High Kappa is used to knock down some overzealous tryhards, and Gillis says that it's his friend Lenny's favorite piece in his collection. But if we're trying to pick on nerf lookalikes, then I just had to make this next at number 9. And thanks to another Brit named Richard, I can show off the SEMA 0.30 Automatic Electric Pistol, or AAP, that Richard received broken. But after a bit of tech work and a new paint scheme done with a couple rattle cans, we have this distinguished piece to show off. Airsoft parody or humiliating, call it as you wish, but I couldn't resist to have it on the show. But if we could get away from pistols for a second, I'd like to show off the 8 spot holder with the first of the three bullpups on the list. Presenting MP Cooler from New York and his Winter Snake APS UAR. Being the last of the simple setups, MBK applied this odd camo by texture brushing, airbrushing, and with some sponges, so as to blend in with the snowy days on his field in Niagara Falls, New York, named Warzone Airsoft. And it would be the one and only snow camo piece that was submitted for the show, which I honestly didn't expect, but that's okay. But I do wonder how an FAO build for snow games would end up looking like. Uh, but anyways, with two slightly colored pistols and an uncommon airsoft bullpup gone over, we can see what waits for us at number 7, which is held by two builders at the same time, because I want to see who you think should own this spot. So first up it's Carson of Denmark with his Cryptic Typhoon Tokimir VSR 10 Pro, while vinyl decals from PunisherTactical.dk. Oh, that was a mouthful. But what you can't see with the internals, which include a zero trigger and cylinder from an old VFC Ashbury and an A2 6.01 inner barrel. But don't overlook that added cheek rest from an FNSPR, the grip tape added to the pistol grip and handguard, and of course Carson's Vision King 4 through 16 by 50 scope, which together brings up the build cost to around $400. This does look good and won't bleed anyone dry for a year if they wish to do something just like this, but on the air side of the spectrum, it's Dobie who's coming into the countdown with a $2,000 airbrush tungsten Cerakote and aluminum black VFC 417. Correction, $2,365 build, and the parts list makes sense of this as it includes the ATN x Sight scope with the digital day and night vision for recording HD scope cam videos, and that's for the Cafe Racing YouTube channel. We also have a die tack grip, a custom machine thread adapter so the oversized buffer tube can be replaced with the real buffer tube, allowing the use of any stock like this Luth AR MBA-1 rifle butt stock. Dobie also modified the receiver so he could use any version 2 gearbox, allowing him to use any M4 AEG grip. And then there's a custom machine one of a kind rail setup with the integrated suppressor. The barrel is also a solid one piece stainless steel Penyon tactical, and the trigger and trigger guard are also custom made. Lots of hard work and money went into this behemoth of a DMR, but does it favor well with you, or do you think that Dobie lost it to Karsten with his VSR? Well, let me know in the comments whose build do you like more, or just keep watching because I'm about to drop one of my favorites in number 6. 
And it's for his Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 inspired Red Tiger King Arms P90 from Joshua of California. Awarded after 150 headshots, this amazing looking P90 has taken my heart just like an old M60 I've seen before. Challenging, unique, and recognizable from veteran players, Joshua used cherry red, gloss black, and clear gloss finish Krylon spray paint, reusable custom stencils, and black permanent marker to get this iconic look. But he made no internal mods. He didn't really need any, I guess, because he did say if it's not broke, then don't fix it. And for $225, I'm very happy I could show this off, but which one do you want more? One of his P90s, or that F2000? Whichever one you choose, you can't seem to go wrong with one of these creations from Joshua. Alright, I've got more to show, and we're just at the 5 minute mark, so let's see. I've got some Milsom setups, and of course some gamer ones, some art pieces, and this. But behind number 5, it's hats off to the Halo franchise for this JG SL8 from Griffin of the UK. But before we get into it, I have to give a proper shout out to Chris Hobbs at GearTechCustomPaint.com. Alone, this man could have filled up all the spots he wanted to, and if you're in the UK and you have an airsoft piece you want to get painted or hydro dipped into any pattern or camo possible, then be sure to check this site out. I'll even include a link in the description. I mean, good god man, this work is not a walk in the park to top. But back to the SL8 he worked on which belongs to Griffin now. Griffin says, It's a one of a kind piece that never fails to turn heads, and has what he still considers two years later to be the best paint job he's ever come across on an airsoft replica. And let's face it, who doesn't love a bit of Halo themed goodness? But no internal mods have been done to this PC yet, thanks to procrastination. But its owner's intentions are to give it a complete overhaul one day. All in all though, for now, it's a $370 project. And Griffin also told me that he thinks that the Airsoft Top Series you're watching now is probably some if not the best Airsoft content out there. It's easy to view, follow, and appreciate for both experienced players and clueless noobs alike. But as for his favorite Airsoft channel in general, he has to go with Rogue System 087. And that's because of his reviews and disassembly videos for being the most instructive and helpful videos out there in his opinion. I love that awesome positivity, and I appreciate him for sending me this build. But with just one of the dozen Gear Tech Custom scene, we can continue along down the park of builds into the fourth spot. And this one goes to someone I accidentally skipped in the helmets countdown when he submitted this Protech A Bravo. But for this spot, it's all about Nate from Deranged Airsoft's PTS Masada or ACR. With this Black Widow inspired paint scheme that was thought up after a local op named Operation Red Storm East. For this setup, the upper was painted gunmetal base, stencils were used for webbing and for the Deranged Airsoft skull outline. The barrel and charging handles were painted using Smith & Wesson Red Cerakote, while the MSK handguard was painted with Tungsten Gray Cerakote. The cheek riser was also dyed gray, the bolt release and brass deflector were dyed deep red for contrast, and of course the mock bolt had to be etched with Deranged. But the additions made afterwards is where we really shine here, which includes a Wolverine SP kit with an amp grip line, an MSK handguard, a red deranged Masada base plate for airline pass through, a red deranged Masada barrel stabilizer, deranged MSK stabilizers, a new red deranged Masada folding stock button, deranged Masada MIF dual charging handles, Magpul Embus Pros, a Sightmark red dot, a Magpul offset 1 inch light mount, a Surefire 2GX tactical and a PTS Rainer Arms Compensator, making this the second thousand dollar piece on the list at $1,200. And even though Nathan has held the Masada ACR as his exclusive weapon, he still favors Novrich as his favorite airsoft YouTuber. And he wanted to shout out all the other Masada owners that follow and use some of the products that he and his brother have designed for the Masada. And that's number four, but coming up next is a rather new YouTuber that just began blowing up on the scene, and it's Prevention with the second King Arms P90, with a camo that some of you guys may pick up on immediately. From Miami, Florida, Revention wanted something that stood out as local airsoft field, and the King Arms P90 was the first AEG that came to mind. The reason for buying would be that Revention is a big fan of Counter-Strike ever since 1.6 through Global Offensive, and this has always been his favorite weapon and skin in the game. And if you're not up to speed yet, then this skin would be called Asmoth, which took around 16 hours to tape and paint. Now for CQB games, not much needs to be really done to your primary sometimes, which means this P90 was only upgraded with a long GMP torque motor, uh, M113, a regular spring, and uh, that's it. And with this orange, black, and white paint job, it sounds out from the sea of green, black, and tan you regularly see. And it's said that every time he takes this to the field, players just can't resist but to want to hold it and take pictures with it, because they've seen the skin so many times before, but never in the real world. This build was so great in the eyes, even Dayton of the House Gamers channel even sent me this quote saying, Amazing detail. The time and effort put into this astounds me. If it were just a picture from CSGO, I wouldn't be surprised. Truly amazed. An awesome way to lock down the spot, 
but now we're down to the last two after all long banter about the couple hundreds of builds that were turned in, and I'm still trying to squeeze in as many as I can before the show is done with. But if I'm going to do that, then we have to check out number two that's going to really tug at those heartstrings. Get a good look at the simply brilliant Clone Trooper Tribute VFC416 from Joseph of California. Built as a dual sector gear or DSG build by Umbrella Armories, this thousand dollar blaster was dedicated to Joseph's three favorite and well recognized clone troopers, Fives, Echo, and Clone Number 99. And the paint job was completed with a standard Krylon spray paint and deep laser engravings for all the markings, slogans, images, and logos. Joseph also replaced the front flash hire with a carbon fiber mock suppressor, added a Madpool SOCOM stock, Magpul rail guards, and he removed the dust cover for a more streamlined clone trooper look. Joseph incorporated so much into his trophy worthy 416, and for two days it was at the very top for our judges and in the submission pools, and I assume you can understand why. Just look at this thing, it's beautiful. Ladies, just make this your Tinder profile picture and you're a sure win. But now after honestly 12 builds under this renditions belt, I have only one more showstopper. I mean, I can end the show right after showing just one pick of it and a lot of y'all will be pleased. But whatever, I'm just stalling now to show off more. But I'm happy that you stick around all the way. So after all that we've been through and seen, let's hit the top spot with the Tarin Carvings masterpiece that was worked on by Adam of Indonesia and owned by James of Canada. A bit stunned, are we? Well, wake up, because we have a bit to go over here with this JG Bar 10. Now, the main attraction would be that $200 carved stock that was detailed with scales and a Western Dragon Eye with a painted finish. That includes a bit of green to still give it some camouflage potential, which was actually designed by James's wife, Heather, so props goes to her. But after James received it, he threw in a Minecraft SDIK system that was hidden in the stock of the rifle. Action Army parts also make up the cylinder, zero trigger, and hop-up chamber, while the barrel is an edgy 6.01 custom barrel with a maple leaf 75 degree bucking. This build was just so amazing to see out of all that was turned in that I just had to send a few pictures to scout the doggy so he could give me his word on it. And he said that's eye catching. Now if I saw a player with that at a site here, then I would certainly be filming them as I like to follow players with different unusual builds. So after all that's been said, edited, and organized, this is the conclusion that we've come to. Adam and James, you guys get the top series top spot for this dragon themed tarring carvings build. And that's it. That's all 10 wrapped up into one great show. And I had a blast putting this together and seeing all the crazy setups, skins, and paint jobs that were brought to my attention. But if you'd like to submit for the next show, that will be a second episode of the HK builds, then be sure to head on over to my Facebook with the links down below and just keep an eye out for a submission poll. And tell me what you thought about what you saw here today in the comments. What was your favorite build? And do you think the top spot is well deserved? That's what the comments are for, and I'd like to hear what you have to say. I'd also like to thank Dayton of the House Gamers, and of course Scout the Doggy for helping me put this all together. And of course Beats by Neusers for playing the show with his music. If you'd like to check them out, then be sure to head down in the description for the links. But until that next US Airsoft original drops for you all to enjoy and comment on, this has been Scott Holmbeck from the city of San Antonio, and I'll be sure to see you all next time.